Hey guys, if you're new here and you like what I'm putting out, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you never miss an upload. Hey there folks, Ash here and welcome to my review of Power Rangers Dino Fury Episode 6 Superstition Strikes. So Episode 6 is an Amelia focused episode and I love how each episode we've gotten in Power Rangers Dino Fury has been a ranger focused episode. Episode 2 was an Ollie focused episode, Episode 3 was a Zato focused episode, Episode 4 introduced new rangers, Episode 5 was an Izzy episode and now we've got an Amelia episode and next week is a Harvey episode. So each ranger has gotten a bit of spotlight as the show has gone on and I really like that and this episode like I said was an Amelia focused episode and it's about Amelia learning to stop believing in superstitious stuff and it's all in her head and just don't think about it. Think about the good things that are going to happen, not about the bad things that are going to happen. That's the lesson they teach in this episode. But apart from the moral lesson and the cool fight scenes, there's some interesting stuff that you got to pay attention to with this episode. And that is at the start of the episode with the bad guys hanging out. Because Void Knight spends a lot of time in this secret room. And none of the bad guys knows what's going on in this secret room in Area 62. So whatever this room is, it's probably very important. Well, it's definitely very important. And I did joke around on Twitter saying it's the Ranger Vault because the Ranger Vault was a secret room that was there the whole time. We knew nothing about. But with this room that the Void Knight is in, it seems like it's very important to the characters. So maybe he's working on something top secret, making a brand new general. I have no idea, but whatever it is, it's definitely going to play a role in the future of the series moving forward. And I like that. I like that a lot. And in this episode, we're also introduced to the character Pop Pop, who was Amelia's grandfather. And I really like that because we're meeting more of the Rangers' relatives. And we got to see that with Beast Morphers. And I'm glad we're seeing it more in Dino Fury because it shows that the Rangers actually have relatives out there and an extended family. So I do like that a lot. And Amelia's grandfather is an awesome character. I'm sure he's probably a one-time character and we might not see him ever again. But I really like the actor, the charm that they had, the warmth that they had. They seem like a really good guy and they brought the character to life being that nice family member that you have. So I really enjoyed the character and the how alive they made him seem. So I did enjoy that quite a fair bit. Uh, I like that. I like that a lot. So the whole premise of this episode is Amelia thinking she's got bad luck because she walked under a ladder and she's very superstitious and I love Ollie being a sassy jerk. I love the sass on Ollie because it is awesome. I love it when Ollie is just really sassy. He's the biggest smart ass out there and I love it. It's like my kind of sass. I just love it. Mwah. Chef's kiss right there. Chef's kiss Chef's Kiss to Kai's performance being sassy as Ollie. I love it. Um, so Amelia thinks she's got bad luck and then bad things start happening. She gets jumped by a Sporax beast. She tries to use a garbage can lid as a shield and it deflects and hits Izzy and Harvey. And then she gets her Morphus stolen and broken. Well, it gets broken and then it gets stolen. And the whole Morpher getting stolen is is quite interesting with what the bad guys do with it because they're able to fix it or repair it and use it to teleport into the into the ranger's base and I really do like that idea because back in the old days there was the rule of the command center where only if you have a power coin you can enter the power chamber and stuff like that and sometimes that rule would be broken here and there um I believe so but I really do like that idea that the bad guy is actually teleported into the base and took the fight to them. So Amelia gets a brand new Morpher and it was interesting that her getting a brand new Morpher is Solon has an interesting bit of dialogue when she's fixing it saying, hey, this is a circuit board and there's only one left. So if your Morpher breaks, I won't be able to fix it again. So I do wonder if that's going to be a reoccurring plot thread later down the line because the thing with these new seasons of Power Rangers there is payoff with certain bits of dialogue with certain moments here and there so I do wonder if that circuit board 
being the last one out there is going to play a role in the future of the series so I really do hope that that was smart writing moving forward I'm sure it was but I'm gonna keep an eye on that and see what happens moving forward when someone else gets their morph for broken because that sounds like it's going to be an important plot device moving forward later down the road so let's talk about the monster of the week smash stone this guy is a wacky dude because this guy was mostly cracking one-liners here and there. Some of them good, some of them bad, but he was mostly there to crack one-liners here and there and be an obstacle for the rangers to fight like mo like most monsters of the week. And I do like that. I do like how they're using the wacky re-soldier bad guys to their advantage and giving them fun voices and fun personalities. Because this one was trying to do like an Arnie impression or something. I don't know. I don't know what accent they were giving this guy. It sounded Russian or something. I couldn't tell. Um, but I really do like the one-liners that this guy had. Like one of them was what one of the, there's two that I really enjoyed. Uh, it, one was when Mucus patted him on the back or slapped him on the back, and he's like, "Hey, did you hit me?" And she was like, "No, I was giving you a pat on the back." And she go and he goes, "Oh, let me do it to you," and slaps her really hard. And I enjoyed that joke. Um, because he's such a brute force guy. And then there's another one when Amelia is able to subdue Boom Tower and teleport him out of the Ranger's base. And Boom Tower is in front of the Rangers and the Monster of the Week, and they're all fighting. And Smash Ta Smash Stone looks at Boom Tower and goes, "Did you get lost?" And that just shows the intelligence of these Monsters of the Week we're getting so far in Dino Fury. Some of them you love, some of them you hate, but design-wise, they are really cool monsters of the week that I do dig, so yeah, it was a pretty fun thing. I do like his design because I believe in the Sentai he was based on a troll, I think he's called the Troll Minosaur or something like that, and this one is just like a moss head. I, I gotta I gotta rewatch I gotta rewatch Re Soldier sometime, eventually, who knows? But I, I vaguely remember this monster from watching it back in the day. So let's talk about the Zord battle. Now the Zord battles in Dino Fury I love because the source material they're using it from had some really good Zord battles in it. And I just love these Zord battles. I think they're really good Zord battles and we, we, I, I just love them. I love them. But there is a weird throwaway line when they use the ankle Zord formation. They use the hammer or the drill, whatever you want to call it. And Amelia has this line saying, Oh, Pop Pop taught me how to use a sledgehammer at the age of seven. And I'm like, e excuse me? You, you could lift a sledgehammer at the age of seven? And I know it's a kid's show, you don't have to think too much about it, but Amelia must have been drinking a lot of milk and eating a lot of vegetables to lift a sledgehammer, depending on how heavy it is, because... Damn! Well, well sledgehammers do, do vary on size and stuff like that, but... <laughs> I, I, I couldn't probably lift a sledgehammer at the age of seven, depending on how big it what big it was, but Amelia's got gains if she was able to lift a sledgehammer at that age. But anyway, they're able to defeat the bad guy and the day is saved, and Amelia learns that bad luck was all in her head, just like Sol and told her, and she just has to focus on the good things. And then you have a comedic moment where Ollie breaks the uh re the uh side mirror on the car or the van and then hijinks ensues where he just tumbles all over the place and it was funny while it lasted I mean I enjoyed it I mean Ollie got his comeuppance for being a smart ass and that's where the episode ends so yeah that's my overall thoughts on my review slash mini podcast whatever you want to call it on episode six of Power Rangers Dino Fury I want to say Hunter Deno did an amazing job as Amelia in this episode. I love her performance. I love seeing her on screen. I love everyone's performance in Power Rangers Dino Fury. They're amazing. But Hunter Deno stole the spotlight as, Am as Amelia in this episode. And I'm excited to see where her character is going to go next. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen next with that character moving forward. And along with the little things they teased at the start of the episode, such as Void Knight's secret room, I wonder what's up with that. Are we going to learn anything about that moving forward in the nearby future? Who knows? Who knows? But overall, I think it was a really solid episode. I enjoyed it quite a fair bit. 
and I can't wait to see where it goes next. With that said, I think I'm going to wrap this video up now. Special thanks to all the members such as Swagger4. If you want to get your name shouted out at the end of a video like Swagger4 over here, become a Zord tier member or higher where you'll get special perks such as badges, emojis and other cool stuff when you hit the join button on the channel. With that said, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day or night. Bye.